What's up guys, it's Scrawny Donnie here. In this video I'm going to be talking about the best camera, in my opinion, for concert photography. So many of you guys may not know, I know this channel is still growing, I'm still trying to build it up, but I do a lot of photography and videography. I do all sorts of things, uh, anywhere from you know shooting cars, concerts for artists, weddings, short films, commercial work, photo and video. So you know, I have different types of cameras, different setups and stuff like that because different cameras are, are best in different situations. You know, I'll go ahead and detail about that later on in some other videos. But for this one, I want to focus on concerts. So I've had a few people ask me, how do I do my concert photography? Like what camera do I use and what setup such as lens and stuff like that? Um, even the settings that I use. So. Basically, the camera that I use for my concerts is this one right here. It's a Sony a7 III. Now, as you can see, this lens right here, uh, it stays on my camera all the time. It's a 2875 Tamron 2.8. Now, prior to having this lens, you know, whenever I would go shoot concerts and stuff like that, um, I always had to switch them around and I would carry like two or three lenses. Prior to this one, I used a kit lens which is a 2470, I believe, 2470 or 2870, but it was like a 3.5 to 5.6 variable. So in low light, it wasn't the best. So then I had to carry like a 50 and then a 28 F2. You know, I had to carry three lens during concerts. Now, shooting concerts is basically like a run and gun type of, uh, of event. You don't really have time to switch lenses sometimes. Like let's say for instance, you see something right like you, you you visualize something right away on the spot and you're gonna try to snap a photo but you have the wrong lens on your camera you're not gonna get the shot so with this one you know it stays on here all the time this one's very versatile sometimes I'm like yo you know this would be a great shot pull out my camera zoom in or zoom out whatever I got to do and I don't have to worry about you know switching lenses and stuff like that so this right here this setup is very convenient um, the reason I like this camera so much for concert photography is because it's a mirrorless, so it's going to be lightweight, it's, it's small, it's portable, um, dual uh, SD card slots, so it's pretty cool because you can take photos and have you know a copy of each photo go to each memory card. So let's say one of them gets corrupted, let's say you have a gig, right, or you're just shooting for fun, and it's for like a really big artist or like a really important event, and one of your memory cards gets corrupted or it gets dropped or lost it still saves on to the other one so that's pretty cool now battery life on this thing is excellent it lasts me a long time I've you know filmed that concerts for five hours straight without having to switch batteries so it kind of tells you how good the battery is um, another thing too is what else what else oh yeah so as you can see I have the the small rig cage on here for concerts I don't really use that so I mean I, I leave it on because it protects the camera but for concerts, you don't really need the cage on there. It's just, I have it on there in case I'm doing different types of shoots. You know, I don't have to put it on and take it off. But it also works very good to protect the camera. So, you know, another thing about this camera too, it's great in low light. Like, I've shot concerts that are just super dark in there. It's You can't see, you know, it's, it's very dark. There's no good lighting and stuff like that. In situations like that, you want something that's good, you know, for low light. And this camera right here, as far as I know, it's one of the best ones on the market for low light. And to top it off, it has really great autofocus, super good autofocus. So low light and good autofocus is one of the main things, in my opinion, for, for low light photography and stuff like that. Because concerts, for the most part, it's going to be low light. There's going to be a lot of action going on, a lot of movement and stuff like that. So you're going to need good autofocus. So, you know, those are the main things about the camera. Um, for the most part, yeah, that's, that's basically all that, you know, I can say about this camera and it's a really good camera. Another thing too is the price. It's under two grand. Um, I know when it came out, it was selling for 2000 and like 2200 with the kit lens. But if you go on, on eBay, I believe you can find them brand new for like 1800 now. So, you know, that's just the body, but still it's a good price. This lens right here, uh, it's 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 honestly it's the best lens you can buy for for anything like 
even for weddings, this thing is great. But back to concert stuff, right? 2875 is, in my opinion, the perfect focal length because for the most part, um, when you're up close at concerts, you know, you, you're going to be up close to, to the artist. So you don't want something that's too zoomed in, but you also want something that's somewhat wide. So 28 is not super wide, but it's wide enough to where, like, let's say you have an artist right here, right? And you're on stage and you're like, well, you don't have to get this shot. 28 is wide enough. But then 75 gives you that little uh, advantage just in case, you know, you, you want to get like a close up of the face or, you know, waist up or shoulders up. Um, and it's a 2.8. This lens is very sharp, very good quality images come out of here. Um, so it being a 2.8 is very good for low light. So, yeah, guys, this is basically my, my main go to setup. For, for concerts now a while back I did shoot a concert with my other camera it's a let me see let me pull it up for you right now it's a Sony a6400 and I have the Sigma 16 1.4 this thing right here is a beast I mean yeah it's small it's not as great as the other one it's cheaper it's a crop sensor but honestly this if, if you're on a budget this setup right here is is one of the best setups now, I'm still waiting on them to release a, a nice APS-C uh, lens for these cameras. That's a, a zoom. I know I can use a Tamron on the other camera, but it's going to be a different, fo different focal length. It's going to be a different uh, focal length once I put it on there. Um, so with this one, yes, I do have to carry two lenses most of the time. Um, I, most of the time, I use a Sigma 16 1.4. It does the job if you're up close. But if you're kind of far away, it's not going to do the job. You might have to get the 31.4 on the side. This thing right here, I, the way I see it is basically a small, it's like a mini a7 III. This actually has better autofocus. Uh, low light capabilities are pretty good for it being a crop sensor compared to other cameras on the market. But this camera for the price and, and everything, for, for the money, you're getting a lot of camera. So... This camera right here, it's it's a little camera that I use on the side sometimes. Like a while back, I was shooting at a, a big. Uh, it wasn't that big, but it was it was a, a fairly big uh, music festival. It, you know, there was people like I think it was Tiger YG, uh, who else? Ty Dolla Sign, Roddy Rich, and I was doing photo and video. So for that event, I had my A7 III on the Ronin S, and then I had this one on the side. So. All those photos that I took, and I'll be posting some like right here on the sides for you guys to see right now in a little bit. Um, those photos for that day or that concert were all taken on this setup right here. So the quality is actually not bad. Um, and yeah, guys, so that's basically all I'm about to talk about for these cameras. Well, a little bit more about this one is, like I said, it has super good autofocus. They improve the battery life on this one compared to the previous model such as the a6300 and the 6500 and as you can see I have the small rig cage on this one and I actually like this cage setup more than that one because this one is like you know it's it's very small it's lightweight unlike the other one it's a little bit more bulky but it kind of protects the camera and like I said too if, if, I've, if I'm ever doing a shoe where I have to put the hot shoe I mean not the hot shoe but like a mic on here what's cool about this cage is it relocates the hot shoe mount on this side. So this is actually my main vlogging camera. Whenever I vlog, I use this camera. And check this out. So when you flip up the screen, typically your, your mic mount is right here, right? So it would block it. So it'd be, it'd be blocking it right here. So it's on the right side now. So whenever I mount my road mic, it's going to be offset it on the side. So it allows me to vlog. So that's why I keep this cage on here too. So it's a great vlogging camera. But back to concert and photography for concerts. Um, yeah, uh, these two cameras right here are beasts, you know. Um, they're kind of both different in their own ways, but kind of depends what you're trying to, how much you're trying to spend. Obviously, I'd say go with this one. It does a lot more, but you don't really need something like this. If you're just starting off and you're on a budget, this right here will get the job done. Another thing too is lenses are like way cheaper. They're like half the price for APS-C compared to this. It's another benefit. So, yeah, I'm going to pull up a, a few examples right here of the photos that I've done with both these cameras for you guys to check out. 
Um, and that's basically it. It's my first, uh, one of my first reviews for, for cameras. So, you know, I'm gonna try to bring, bring more review stuff out. Um, if you wanna check out my Instagram, I have a ton of my work on there. It's gonna be in the link in the description. I'll see you guys next time. I hope you enjoy. Thanks.